and he's double forward gating his opponent. What is this? It's like a double Max Pax build. Now this double forward gate for Max Pax has not been spotted yet by Clem. He sees it now though, and he's like, wait a minute, two zealots this early, something is so weird, and he's not wrong. Something is so weird. He cancels his natural, he cancels the bunker immediately, and drops down a supply depot. The wall is refinished here. Wow, he's really trying hard on this wall. Two cancels going down, though, and actually, Max Pack's getting on top of this. One Zealot has gone down. Second Zealot's still here to chase these units away, though. Goes into the main base, does see the uh, second factory, or the first factory going down behind that barrack. The, uh, the Oh, he needs to get that other Zealot in. Nice, gets the other Zealot in here, and this is gorgeous. So far, two Zealots keeping these units busy. Nice kiting, of course, from Clem here, but slowing down his building quite a bit here, and Max Pax is getting a lot done with these units of Zealots. Uh, Marine number one goes down. Marine number two almost certainly going to go down as well. It's a little too close for comfort right now. As soon as it stops to attack, it's going to get one round off. The Reaper's going to be forced to take out that other Zealot, and there's more. there are more Zealots coming in. Stalkers as well. Stalker going to stop or slow down the building of this. Oh, no, he doesn't slow down the building of the factory. The factory is still going down here for Clem all. Oh my god, oh my god. Second Stalker is here, though. First Stalker kiting back. Second Stalker coming forward now. He's got high ground vision. Can pick off these re these uh, Marines one by one as the Stalkers continue to rotate out here for Max Packs. This is a lot of pressure on Clem right now. One Stalker does go down, but the Marine count is down to zero here. The unit count very, very low for Clem. Max Packs on two Stalkers here. There's only one Reaper to fight today. The bunker is down now for Clem, but the Stalkers are in, and of course the Stalkers can outrange that bunker, move around it, and try and get something done. With the bunker, though, Clem should be able to stabilize a little bit here in game Number two. Or game number one. Goodness gracious. Game one. Second shield battery's out, and the Void Ray has joined the freaking party. Let's go, boys and girls. And behind this, Max Pax getting a fleet beacon. Oh, the age-old question. Is the fleet beacon for carriers, or is it just for Flux Veins? Oh, my God. The bunker gets knocked down here. Can he afford to eat a shot from the Widow Mine, or is he going to send something forward to eat that Widow Mine shot? Should send one Stalker forward. Hopefully, Clem has, or hopefully Max Pax has not forgotten about that Widow Mine. He's going to get a couple supply depots down. Clem now badly supply blocked, trying to get a Viking out. The Viking is going to meet the wrath of this, um, this, uh, vo Void Ray, though, and with the Stalkers in the low ground, this is going to be fantastic. And Danger Mode, yes, this is Zuka the Casters, uh, the French Zuka. This is his cup. Just like, you know, we've got the Olsen Files or the, the Bald Guy Classic. This is one of Zuka's, this is Zuka's, Zuka's flagship tournament, and he is hosting the entire thing. So, mad shout-outs to Zuka, the French caster, for putting on this insane action. Oh, Tempest. It's going to be Tempest. It's going to be Tempest, you guys! <laughs> Max Pax going for the Tempest Shield Battery build. Oh, I love it so much. Barrack. We're lifting off here, but there are two Void Rays already on top. He's got to set off this Widow Mine. That's really what's causing him consternation right now is the Widow Mine. Opening up with these Void Rays. The Vikings get a couple shots off here, but the Shield Batteries are here. Five Shield Batteries down for Backpacks. No secondary pylon, though, so he's only got one pylon to support all of these Shield Batteries. Got to be cautious, because if that one pylon does go down, this push, more or less, over. First Tempest on its way out from Maxpacks, and he's working on Tempest number two. Ho, 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 boys and girls. Viking gets pushed back here. Void Ray's still in good shape. Three Stalkers still here on the ground. Second Pylon is here to support these shield batteries. And now the Tempest is here. The Tempest, of course, outranges all of these things. We do see uh, we see the uh, Cyclone upgrade going down for those mag field accelerators to increase the range of the Cyclone. But now, Max, Cas Max Pax can hop right in with the Tempest to outrange everything else. He's got the Void Race forward. Tempest picking down. One Viking does go down. A couple shield, a couple Vi the Vikings do get the shots off onto the Void Race. The Void Race are going to stay alive, though. The shield battery is still here. Stalkers on the bottom side. Max Pax committing to this all in, and I love it. I love it. I love it. Tank on the high ground. Going to push these stalkers back. Actually, a pretty decent composition here for from Clem. Second Tempest on its way out now. Unit counting station is right here, guys. You can see there's the uh, Widow Mine causing a, 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 good, a lot of good zoning here for Clem. Max Pax is unable to just push in like he really wants to. He can't be as aggressive as he needs to be with these units right now. But now that the Tempest count is starting to grow, it's going to look better and better for him. Oh, nice. Get some shots off onto the Viking here. The Viking about half health already. One Marine goes down. Second Marine should go down as well to the Tempest. Picking down the bunker little by little. But of course, the Tempest outranged that bunker pretty badly. He's forcing Clem to use a lot of minerals to repair up that bunker. Clem now in a really rough spot. He's landed his barrack to a safer location. He's trying to crank out more Cyclones and more Vikings, which is a decent shot. Oh, the Widowmine barely gets down. The Widowmine does not die here. Nicely played by Clem so far. Behind this, Max Pax expanding. And where is he expanding? Wait, not to there. Not to his natural. Where is he expanding? That's right, motherfuckers. Right into the natural of Clem. There is no shame as Max Pax is going for it. This will not only allow him 
to uh, mine from this base if he so chooses, but more importantly, will allow him to use that shield battery overcharge. And here we go. He's just going to go for it. Clem knows he can't hold out for too much longer. The final fight is upon us, but things look really, really good for Max Pax right now. He's on 24 workers. Clem is only on 22. Max Pax working on a natural, working on more shield batteries. He's got a really hard contain on his opponent right now. Man, if he could just take out this Widow Mine, he could move in with relative impunity. Viking count up to four. Tank gonna get some shots off there, forcing... Okay, the tank gonna move forward. Here we go. One Cyclone does go down. Tempest getting some nice focus fire shots down. First uh, Void Ray has gone down. Second Void Ray still barely alive. The second Void Ray does get taken down. Shield battery overcharge going down though for Max Pax. Now he can use it. Great timing on the Nexus by Max Pax. Gonna save all these units with the shield battery overcharge. Second Cyclone goes down. There are only four Vikings left. There's no tank. And that's it. Clem taps out and Max Pax takes game number one. All right, we've got the uh, Command Center Orbital Command on the way, and it looks like it's just going to be a straight-up Reaper expand for Clem. First Reaper coming out, and the uh, Command Center going down on that low ground with a factory on the high ground. Very standard play here on both sides. Man, things are looking so interesting here. After a wacky game number one, Max Pax, of course, is a player who's known for his creativity. He's known for his uh, his uh, ingenuity. He, of course, has a build named after him, the Max Pax build which is that forward gateway that slows down the Terran player's command center building. Uh, really interesting stuff, and I'm super jazzed to see what we get in game two. Now, his first Zealot is going to get caught by the uh, Reaper here. I love that he's using the line of sight blocker to try and chase that Reaper down and make sure the Zealot gets as close to it as he possibly can. I don't think he'll be able to sneak a kill off on that Reaper, uh, but the line of sight blocker play is really cute there for Max Pax. Just buying himself a little more time, forcing a bit of a micro battle here between two players whose micro it was really very impressive. Reaper will secure the kill, though, on that uh, Zealot and head back home for Clem. The Phoenix... Oh, my God. Is the Phoenix going to catch this drop? Are you kidding me right now? Oh, it's a little too far north unless he stops. I don't think he's going to. Max Pax is going to miss this big drop coming in from Clem. Six Marines into the main base, and there ain't much here for Max Pax to defend against it. No shield battery. Uh, no units at all. Warpgate research not finished yet, which means there is simply nothing here. A Phoenix, a hope, and a prayer. Let's see what Clem can get done here with this initial engagement. And here we go, Clem pushes in. One probe kill. Extra pylon on the high ground. Adepts rallied into the main base. The Adepts are going to be enough to scare Clem back to the, na to the natural. Or to the main, rather. One Phoenix does escape. Gets a couple pot shots off onto the medevac here. Adepts going to clean this up, and the Phoenix should be on top of this. But I think Clem is going to escape with his life and his dignity. Meanwhile, Hellion in the natural. And oh, Max Pax losing so many probes here. Four probes going down immediately. Four probes for the one Hellion. Honestly, that Hellion giving up some good service. Four kills for the cost of one Hellion. That's pretty efficient there. As Clem's efficiency this game, unquestioned. Slightly slightly more efficient than his opponent. But a lot of that, of course, is in worker kills. And those are going to add up over the course of the game. We can see the Phoenix continuing to be pumped out for Max Pax here. No Robo Bay yet. That indicates that it might not, in fact, be Phoenix Colossus. But usually get the Robo Bay down a little bit later. So we can just be patient and see if and when that Robo Bay comes down. Max Pax right now, working on a third base, working on those probes, making sure that he stays economically ahead of his opponent. He's got this four Phoenix army coming across, uh, and the income, of course, spiking in favor of Clem here, but only briefly, as Max Pax is working off of three bases now. And Clem's third is still under construction in the main. Tank on the way out for Clem, who's adding on barracks number two and three in the main. He's also got this uh, second... Uh, tech lab free, which indicates that he's probably going to float both these barracks over and start stim and combat shields at the same time. When you do those upgrades concurrently, generally what it means is that you're going to uh, attack a little bit more aggressively since you're going to have both of those ga both those upgrades ready to go at the same time. So it's more likely that Clem wants to push out closer to the 7 or 8 minute mark, despite being set back a little bit in the early game with his uh, aggression not really paying off. Meanwhile, on Max Pax's side of the board, we've got the Robo Bay already going down. Should see a Colossus popping out of that Robo right away. Phoenix sharking into the natural, but they aren't going to find any luck there. Clem's Marines are here to drive him away. Marine scouts that third base, sees that the third is finished, and now Clem realizes, oh man, i got to get my third out. I've got to get this income advantage, and I've got to keep it where it has been for most of the game so far. Phoenix going to pick down this third base, and the third base... Will still land, I think, as the Marines on the high ground, Marines on the low ground, Marines generally everywhere for Clem right now. Uh, Clem at a very scary, almost 50 army supply right now, 20 Marines on the board. Uh, he's got a tank, he's got a cyclone, he's got everything he needs to fight against. He's even got Widow Mines, wow, everything he needs to fight against a primarily air army out of Max Pax. The Phoenix number, by the way, for Max Pax continuing to grow here as another Phoenix comes out, the Robo Bay on the way. 
All right, all right. Here comes Clem's initial push, but Max Pax ready to respond to it. He's got one shield battery, second shield battery coming down now. He's got the one immortal going in for the engagement here. He's got plenty of Phoenix out. His Colossus is here. Now, there's no extended Thermal Lance, which means the Colossus could be in bad shape. Uh, it's going to have to get much closer to these bio units before it's able to attack. The bio units might get a little bit more damage done, but I think Clem has an awful lot here. He's about 20 army supply ahead of his opponent, and we'll see if he can make it. Nice pickups on the Phoenix here. The Widow Mine's getting picked down for the cost of, oh my god, no Phoenix. The Shield Battery Overcharge really saving Max Pax's bacon here, but now he's fighting out of range of that Shield Battery Overcharge. The Phoenix lifting up what they can. The tank's still alive in the back. The tank with just one kill, but a lot of damage done. The Gateway Army for Max Pax almost completely gone, but he will be able to clean up this army, and Clem is going to be forced to retreat here. Obviously, you can't stay engaged against those Phoenix because the Phoenix will pick down these medevacs, as we see here. The last Medivac. Oh my god, the last medevac gets picked off there. Two medevacs retreat from the army. A nice defense from Max Pax there. Again, he did use that shield over uh, shield battery overcharge. Did save his Colossus, though. And really, at the end of the day, Max Pax takes a much more efficient engagement. Look at this army supply graph. Look at the delta between those two lines getting much, much narrower in that last engagement. That is exactly what you want to see from Max Pax. The third base for Clem is established, though he's working on uh, some additional production in the main base, a second starport coming down, realizing he's going to be up against Phoenix Colossus. He needs a lot, a lot of Vikings to make this game work. Behind this, Max Pax uh, still working on Colossi. Extended Thermal Lance is finished. He's got uh, two, three Colossi on the map now, and he changes, instead of another Colossi, uh, instead of another Colossus, he is going to instead make a Disruptor. Disruptors, of course, are absolutely valuable for the Protoss army. When you've got a Protoss army, I was saying this earlier uh, in the day, but it, it's not like the Terran army. The Terran army, you can just get a blob of units, and they have enough DPS. As long as you target fire and stim correctly, they're gonna, you know, it's gonna work, no problem. The Protoss army, you generally can't just get a bunch of DPS in one ball, because, you know, what are you gonna do? Zealots, but they don't really all fire at the same time. Hard to target fire stuff down with Zealots. So with the Protoss army, you've got to take a different approach. You've got to get splash damage, which is your Colossi. And then you've got to get positioning advantage as well. And the positioning advantage in the Protoss army is going to come from a few different units. Uh, first of all, sentries, of course. Force fields, the original positional advantage unit, uh, literally creating walls where your opponent is not. Secondly, storms, forcing your opponent to dodge out of storms or to avoid storms and wait a little bit longer. Uh, is another great way that you can give yourself positional advantage in a game. And the third and final way, and this is the way we're going to see for Max Packs this game, are these Disruptors that are popping out now. Disruptors force your opponent to dodge those those uh, Purification Novas, the Disruptor Balls, on the map. They force them to dodge them, force them to get out of position a little bit, and they can be incredibly effective in the game in uh, forcing the Terran into a bad spot. So Max Pax has a really well-balanced army right now. He's a bit shy on gateway units. In fact, he's only got two sentries for gateway units. Needs to warp in some more Zealots, some Stalkers, something to give this army a little bit of bulk. I like to say that a Protoss players can't just build the fun units. You can't just build Disruptors and Colossus. You gotta build the boring units as well. You gotta build those Zealots. You gotta build those Stalkers. You gotta make sure that you've got a core of strong gateway units underneath to, if nothing else, act as a meat shield for the rest of your units. Max Pack's going to make his presence known here with one Disruptor shot off the bow, forcing Clem back a little ways, but Clem not too terribly scared here. Second Disruptor Ball misses. Vikings get one good salvo off on these uh, Phoenix. Oh, good Disruptor Ball there, killing off one of the Ghosts. There are only two Ghosts, one Ghost left, rather, in the army of Clem right now, which means the EMPs not going to be as effective as they possibly could be. Phoenix versus Viking going to be an interesting fight here. The Phoenix do not have their uh, Anion Pulse Crystals yet, so their range is not improved. Uh, shield battery overcharge again going down for Max Pax as he queues up, as he uh, heals up all these units and their shields. Clem forced to disengage here very briefly. Look at this pylon spread from Max Pax, though, on the bottom side of the map. He's got great map vision. Gonna see exactly where his opponent is. This observer on top of the army will get scanned off there. Uh, so until that point, Max Pax had a pretty good idea where Clem is. Is working on another observer now, and look at this. The fleet beacon is down, and Ion Pulse Crystals is on the way. EMP'd his own army there accidentally, I think. Maybe trying to turn an observer, but no observer was found. Disruptor Ball is going to not get anything. One Marauder kill off the Disruptor Ball. Second Disruptor Ball also not going to get much. Nice dodges here by Clem. But now the Vikings are out of position. One Viking does go down. Second Viking barely still alive here. Uh, the Viking count is still at 8, 9, 10, 11 for Clem. EMP onto all the Phoenix, though, and that is really rough. Every single Phoenix losing all of its shields there. The Phoenix now can't engage with this army, and that's going to buy Clem a little more time to get another wave of reinforcements coming across the map. Clem is now on plus 2, plus 2, whereas Max Pax is stuck on plus 1 ar or plus one ground attack and plus 1 air attack. Disruptor gets absolutely destroyed there. 
by Clem. I'm not sure what Max Max was doing. Maybe a bit of miscontrol, uh, but trying to get that disruptor out. Another disruptor coming forward. Disruptor ball going to zone him out there. And oh god, Clem going to engage in that. Actually, he's going to lose a bit here and loses an awful lot there. A few nice disruptor shots going down. Max Max holding his own here against a very scary plus two plus two army from Clem. Clem has uh, five ghosts in his army now. Four ghosts in his army now. Adding on two more. Uh, extra barracks coming down now as well. Ghost Academy has not yet researched any nuclear missiles. Uh, personal cloaking not finished either. There's the upgrade tab here. Curious what things look like so far. Very basic upgrades from either player aside from that. Very interesting. Anon and Pulse Crystals. Out of Max Packs. And speaking of interesting out of Max Packs, look at that. Carriers. On the way, Max Packs going straight. Golden Armada up in this baby. And uh, we see two carriers already out. and the, uh, One carrier already out. The second one on the way. Carrier Colossus Phoenix. A scary army if I've ever seen one. Especially against Bio, Bio, Bio out of Clem. Now, Clem has sort of read the room here. He hasn't seen the carriers yet, but he knows that Anna on Pulse Crystals is finished because he's seen the purple beams from those Phoenix, which means there is a fleet beacon, which means that carriers could be imminent. So he's adding on an extra Stargate to get more Vikings out to deal with the threat. He's got uh, 10 Vikings on the map right now. Crank down Vikings two at a time. Could be up to six at a time once this production gets going. Vikings insanely valuable. Of course, with target firing, the Vikings can take down the uh, carriers right away, and not it's easier to, to target all your Vikings onto a carrier rather than going for um, interceptors, which is what the AI generally wants to do for the carrier. EMP onto the Phoenix again, zoning it out here. Disruptor falls, though, counter zoning. Both these players being very cautious with this engagement. I feel like this is one of those games that once the first engage, once the actual engagement occurs, that's going to be the end of the game. Lickety split. Clem has eight, nine ghosts on the way. Double drop coming down to the south side for Clem as well. Phoenix pushing forward. Three Stargates are finished up. He's adding on Phoenix, but also uh, another another uh, carrier. Carrier count now up to four. Should be five soon. Here we go. Double drop in the main. Clem is going to get spotted by this uh, by this photon cannon. Phoenix coming in to pick up the medevacs here. Those anion pulse crystals really doing a number. Uh, for the Phoenix, allowing him to get away a little bit more quickly here. Double drop going down, but the Phoenix still have plenty of Graviton Beam energy left over. They're going to be able to pick up and clean up all of those Marines. The Marine gets one last kill on the Photon Cannon, but this has allowed Clem to rotate around to the north side. Clem now slightly behind in army supply with that drop not doing anything. Max Pack steadily building up his army and taking some really efficient trades here. Look at this efficiency chart right now. Wow. Uh, Max Pack's playing about two-thirds as efficient as, or uh, playing about 30% uh, more efficiently than his opponent here. Phoenix moving forward. They are going to pick off one, uh, one Vic. Make it two Vikings. Make it three Vikings. Make it four. Oh my god, four Vikings. The Viking count getting smaller and smaller. And as that Viking count begins to wane, Max Pax goes into a stronger and stronger position with no Vikings on the ground. These carriers can absolutely run amok. With no Vikings on the ground, the Colossi can get uh, far enough away, get that appropriate distance, and just start to zap down any bio units they see. First nuke on the way. From Clem. Ha. <laughs> There's me leaving the game from the replay earlier. And here we go. Nine ghosts out for Clinton. They've all got a ton of energy. First nuke on the way. We've got a fourth Stargate coming down as, as carriers continue to be pumped out here for Max Packs. Phoenix can go ahead and engage. A bit of missed EMPs there. Not really catching anything. Disruptor Ball also not catching anything either. Good scan there from uh, Clem, keeping that Observer down. Going to allow Max Pax not to see where he is, and that's so tantamount in this fight. If you don't know where your opponent is, you can't rotate appropriately, especially with a slow-moving army like Max Pax has right now. Carriers a little bit slow to respond. Disruptors and Immortals, a little bit clunky units on the ground here. Luckily, Max Pax's Star Sense, I was going to say Star Sense is tingling. He's got Observer behind this army. He knows exactly where Clem is. He's got plenty of Observers in the map here. Three Observers all doing their duty. Nuclear launch detected here. Coming out from Clem. He's nuking down onto the third base, but there's a big engagement going on on the north side. Even if that nuke goes down, it's not going to catch too much because Clem is losing everything on the north side here. Like I said earlier, Carrier in the back. Carrier's in the back. Colossus in the back. That nuke is going to land here at the fourth base, but only gets a couple of photon cannons. Meanwhile, on the north side, Max Pax destroying Clem's army. Clem's got almost no bio units left. He's got one marine, seven marauders, a handful of vikings, and Max Pax is putting himself in an amazing position this game to take it. Look, Clem has 3-3 three, three bio, and I would never count out 3-3 three, three bio, but there's simply not that much left. 
for our boy Clem. Max Pax's carriers moving in interceptors lazily, just destroying reinforcing marines. The Colossus is still here. The Phoenix are still here, cutting off reinforcements, and the poor missile turret gets picked out immediately. The Vikings trying to make one last stand here, but I think you guys, I think he's done it. Max Pax pushes in to the main base now on top of the production facilities of Clem. Clem has absolutely nothing left. Sick two Vikings, zero Vikings. Max Pax has done it. Clem loses game number two, and that is it. Max Pax wins the series. The best of three going to Max Pax.